If you're a freelance web designer or an agency owner and you are struggling with your website maintenance or management or website care plan situation, if you just want some other opinions, this video is for you. I'm gonna go through the newer plan that we offer. I have some other plan like videos on this channel that you could go take a look at. I'll leave a link below and in the card and stuff. But um, this, uh, there was a question in a Facebook group recently and uh, I wanna kinda go through everything that we offer and more so why. So if what you're looking at here, this is PandaDoc. Again, link in the description if you want to check out PandaDoc. I love it. But what this is, is this is the page of our proposal that we talk about website management. A couple things that I'm going to try to hit on all of them is we never really sell any websites without management plans. Uh, it's never really happened in the history of our business. And uh, I think that's kind of what you should honestly shoot for because the the preface of this right this isn't there's there's only one plan here that i'm going to show you there's no like a b and c there's no like bronze silver gold it's just one plan um it may not work for everybody this plan may not even work for the b for the businesses that you're kind of dealing with but what i am telling you is if you want to be a professional in this space and you want to be more of a partner seen more of as a uh, a positive roi partner than a just somebody that they're paying random monthly fees to and not knowing why this will get you closer to that, I guarantee you. So that is the the premise of uh, how we're operating on this and the reason that I've crafted this one in, in such a way. Okay, so the first thing, I'm just gonna go through this, like I said, um, I will leave like the, the, the document portion of this somewhere in the description as well if you wanna check it out. But um, feel free to take this and adapt it however you'd like, use it, I don't care, it doesn't matter. But I'm gonna tell you the rationale for all the decisions here. Starting at the top, why I'm calling this website management as opposed to website care plan or website hosting and maintenance and all that, it's pretty simple. And I wanna just set the expectation with the clients that we're doing more than hosting and maintenance, which we are in this plan. And we're also doing more than just caring for the website. My issue in our business has always been that we are not seen as an ROI positive force. And this, this part of the business, this offer is very difficult to create that. Because until there's a problem, clients do not give a shit about this monthly this monthly recurring thing, right? If you're doing all the right things like security and backups and everything like that, and then something happens and there's a bug and you're able to roll back, then maybe they'll care, but they don't care until, the, until that, that happens. So what I've done in this plan is kind of reverse engineered a little bit and you'll see. So that's just, again, semantics, why it's called website management. The first thing we offer, and I put this at the top because I feel like this is the most important thing that they're gonna get out of this. And again, this is very different. You will not see this in a lot of care plans. It's a digital strategy me meeting. It's every month, so I'll just read this here. We'll have a 30 month or 30 minute meeting every single month. You'll tell us how last month went for your business and we'll look at the digital data together. If there are ideas to turn into projects, we'll quote that out as a statement of work for you to authorize. So it's like a separate thing. This, I'm gonna, I have to spend a couple seconds on this because this is the most important part probably of this whole thing. I'll, I'll give you all the other stuff as well, but this is the most important part. The reason we, the reason it's at the top is because they're gonna care about that the most because the way we're gonna set the expectation is that every month they're paying us a fee, which in this case, I'll tell you what it is, it's $2.99 a month, okay? And again, adjust accordingly, but that's, that's based on math, which we'll get to in a second. But um, with the digital strategy meeting specifically, that right there is the is the the diamond in the rough that they're probably not going to get many other places. The expectation we're setting with that is that we are not just going to host this website for you, whatever, like random services that they don't understand, and then just take ninety nine dollars, one hundred fifty dollars of them for, per month. We're not doing that. We are going to sit down with them virtually every month for thirty minutes. They're going to tell us how their shit went. We're gonna their, their business. They're we're gonna tell uh, them. We're gonna look at data. We're gonna look at actual Google Analytics, basic stuff. We're not gonna be doing anything. We're gonna be just the, the data is getting collected automatically, right? We're gonna look at Google Analytics. We're gonna maybe look at some like basic SEO traffic and stuff like that. But we're not gonna do anything. That's a really important point. Okay, we're just we're budgeting thirty minutes of time to discuss. We're not actually doing anything. Okay, then. Uh, f from that meeting and all of the things that we set up and they're getting with this meeting, th with this program, this uh, you know monthly recurring, is the, the the it's like they're they're paying for our expertise in analysis, and then if they want work done or if we submit like if we if we say hey you know what you're looking a little low on like you know people are getting to the about page or contact page or whatever and they're bouncing maybe we need to explore some CRO stuff and then we can scope that out 
Additionally, and it could either be like a one-time engagement or, an, or a separate monthly thing. So this is your key. You built the website, awesome. You have to host and you have to maintain it, okay. But now you need another you need another way to get more business from them. This is the best way that I've found to do that. It just makes too much sense. Also, I don't know about you, but I always sometimes like, very in the past, I've like definitely lost tr lost touch with clients, and that's not good. You, you you're literally they're literally paying you monthly. You should probably be talking to them. So I'll, maybe I'll talk more about that as we go. But like that's the most important piece. And I think just that I think you'd get a lot of value out of uh, uh, implementing something like that. Let's go through some of the technical stuff because I'm sure people have questions, and there's no one right way to do this. So um, just here's just ideas: dedicated WordPress hosting and SSL certificate. Your, your website will be hosted on its own dedicated server and will be able to handle up to 500 concurrent visitors. Additionally, your, your website's SSL will encrypt and transfer user data of information. Now, at this point, I wanna to explain to you, and I'll kind of give you a behind the scenes here a little bit, is this is more of the document. This isn't fully matched up, but when I'm creating something like this, what you saw there in a, a second ago, that was on a proposal. This is more like for you and I probably where we would understand it. Look at these columns, client speak, tech speak is it in the, the program or whatever like is it in is it in this this uh you know this stack this platform thing or whatever the monthly plan and then why they would care so my point is if you're building this from scratch for yourself maybe start with something like this where it's like what are they actually getting take a look at all the things that you're paying for all the things in your actual stack and write them in a column then they are going to care what you're using, and we'll go through these as we continue to go. They're gonna, they care about this column, but they don't care about it like you and I care about it. They care about it like this. And then they, and then they also, they, well, you have to explain it to them like that, translate it. And then they ultimately care for a separate business re reason that they probably do not know until you tell them, right? They probably don't know that they need backups until they know that they need backups, until you tell them, like, well, you have to have backups because if something happens, you know, unforeseen circumstances, we have something to go back to, right? So you have to translate it to them. That's how you actually sell it, right? So just knowing that and coming back into the actual, you know, client facing document here, um, that's ultimately kind of what I'm doing there is like, I'm, I'm translating what this actually is. And for you, I will translate it. So you have an idea, dedicated WordPress hosting and SSL certificate. The reason I wrote it like that is one, people always like, like uh, segment out like SSL certificate. I'm like, I don't, you don't need to do that. These platforms, it's first of all, it's free with hosting most of the time anyway now. And it's like, you don't need to do that. And they don't also, they also don't, you don't need to stuff a bunch of shit in this, in this, uh, this plan here. You could just, you know, kind of consolidate the things that aren't they're important, but they're not as important to like highlight. Like you don't want to stuff this one, this top one, because that's really important. But for the SSL certificate, like, yeah, we only set that up one time, but you kind of do somewhat have to monitor it. Yeah, pretty much auto renewals. But if there's ever a problem, you got to deal with that. The hosting, you're obviously paying for. It's definitely a part of that. Uh, if you want to know specific tools that we use, we use Gridpane. We use Vulture. And every website that we build gets a two gigabyte box. Okay, I think that at this current time is like $18 a month or something like that. I don't know. Again, we'll talk about the math here in a second. Um, I'll point you to a good resource specifically for that. But um, that is what we do. So every single website goes on its own box. And the reason we do that, it's probably overkill, you know, uh, whatever. But the reason we do that is because super separation of concerns. And then if I ever need to scale those like those those boxes up. Like if I have a client on a box, then I can easily scale up and down. You don't have to do that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend putting twenty five on one box. So maybe find a happy medium. That's just what we do, and I think it's a lot it's a lot cleaner from management and and like a kind of accounting purposes and things like that. But again, that's just where we're at right now, and it's worked very well. Next thing is auto updating legal policies. So we use Termageddon, link in the description for them. Um, every website that collects user data must have legal policies, privacy policy, external service, da, da, da. We partner with a software platform that helps you generate these policies by simply answering questions about your business. Now, you could, you could do a couple things here. You could say the platform that you put in there. I actually don't care. I could, I write Termageddon in there. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't think they're going to like swoop into Termageddon and get a, get a license under you. I think a lot of clients, if they're, if they're good clients are actually just going to appreciate you having it all in one and you taking care of it and everything like that. We use the reseller, the reseller model of Termageddon, if you're not familiar with it, rather than the affiliate one. So it's like, we just kind of manage the license for our clients ultimately. Uh, and it works very well because First of all, they most of the time maybe they'll have a legal team, but the legal team that they have probably doesn't deal a lot with the 
they, they might not deal a lot with like web stuff and like privacy policies in terms of services, probably like other things. If they do, I mean, you could just negate this. I mean, I wouldn't take it out and like charge them less necessarily. They're probably still going to need something else. They might not write like a cookie policy. You know what I mean? So there's a, there's a lot of different stuff. I definitely look into Termageddon and look more into that. And again, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the description or in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to answer them. But um, but yeah, so I mean, again, we use Term Again for that, as far as you know, going back to this, um, and we just give them a license and we help them set it up and and all that. And that's that's I think that's an, another big thing that some people offer that, but that's a that's a real one that I could also kind of persuade them a little bit, sell a little bit better. Website analytics setup: we set up various analytics tools to gather website traffic, user behavior, i.e., Google, Google Analytics. Then we analyze the data and provide our thoughts during our monthly strategy meeting with you. This is imperative, okay? You can't go into that meeting with no data. You can't go into that meeting with nothing to, no, no, you know, uh, no ammunition, right? So honestly, on, it depends on how much you want, how you want to charge and make sure your numbers work out. For us, Google Analytics, it's free. You could use Fathom and stuff like that. But I mean, just something to understand the the analytics, right? Like the, the traffic on the website. You gotta have something in there. Really nice would be an SEO tool. Even if you're not providing SEO, again, understand you're not like Uber Suggest has a life. We have the LTD. So like if you invest in that, you're definitely going to get your, your money's worth out of it one way or another. And the idea is investing those tools. So it gives you the, the it, it gets, you need the data first, right? You need the data to be able to sell the service is the way that I think about it. So this management thing, I almost call this thing website management and reporting because if you go Google Analytics, or similar, okay, or similar things, right? Something for the traffic, something for the the SEO uh, portions of it, right? Where, where how people are actually like, you know, like how you're ranking in search and things like that with like an Uber suggest. And then you go hot jar or something equivalent, like a mouse flow, where like now you've, now you have literally tackled understanding how the users are kind of behaving on the website, how they're getting there, how they're, how you're ranking in search and what they're doing on the website and if they're converting or not. Do you understand now that you have the data to sell them on SEO, CRO, kind of even pay per click sort of in a way? Like there's just there's a lot op- there's a lot of options there now. And again, I just I love this setup because now you're you're giving yourself the opportunity to sell the next engagement, whether it's a one time or recurring or whatever. I think it's I I'm really loving it. So the next thing is uh, agency software licenses. This is a weird one sometimes because they don't understand necessarily what they're ta- what you're talking about uh, a lot of times. So you have to you have to understand you have to explain it to them. So your website will be built on WordPress and utilizes several pieces of premium software. By partnering with us for the website management, you benefit by not having to manage the software licenses or pay for the software directly. So for that, if you have like Bricks, Perf Matters, uh, you know I don't know Short Pixel, like what all these all these different you know pieces of uh, license, uh, all those different pieces of software that you are building their website for or building their website with and you manage like the, either the LTDs, the annuals or monthlies or whatever, but they're, but you have multiple, um, like one license co- covers multiple domains, multiple sites. It's a, it is of a huge benefit to them. I've actually done this before where I'd like look at all the, the costs that the, the software that I use on a website and then I see what it costs me, obviously, just from the business side. But then I also say, like, well, if you wanted to replace this, how much would it cost you? And, you know, these one-site licenses aren't extremely expensive, but they're, like, you know, 50, 60 bucks a year or whatever. And they wouldn't be getting all of the other value that you're packing in. You don't have to go to that length. Uh, but explaining that to them in some sort of, you know, degree, just understanding, like, WordPress gives you the robustness and the flexibility to do all these different things. We have built this beautiful stack that uh, allows us to do these things. And you don't have to worry about any of that. That's all like wrapped up. There is a lot to be said with like one simple monthly price, engagement price, whatever for that. Okay, so let's keep going. Monthly WordPress maintenance and bug fixes. Again, these are two things that like people tend to like write out. And I've done it in the past where it's like, oh, update core, plugins, fixes, like bug fixes. It's it's all it's all the same to them. I mean, first of all, you should you should absolutely be doing this regardless. You should update your shit as, as often as possible, in my opinion. We'll make another video about that. I think I might have actually, but uh, the the whole thing there is like every WordPress website needs regular updates to core themes and plugins. Okay, they don't need to be individual line items. Uh, if you if not done regularly, some of your website functionality could break. We can we can handle this uh, maintenance and, assi- and any associated bugs fixes for you, so you don't have to worry. They don't want to deal with that. Trust me, like they don't. Obviously, they don't want to deal with that. The other thing though is if in this specific case, if you have any case studies from people that have came to you with broken websites, great thing to put in there. I know that we have a few. It's 
definitely like you don't have to put it right there but if but as objections if any objections would come up like this is a real thing it really happens vulnerabilities come up as web developers it is our job to keep eyes and uh, watchful eyes and ears over everything that is going on in this community and you know the wordpress ecosystem and do not fret because you will be you will be safe you know in that regard and your website will be good um, 24 hour security or 24 hour critical updates. Uh, there is a lot of third party software involved in, you know, this is kind of, this actually almost even kind of goes with that last one, but it's a little, it's a little different. So I think I, I put it in a different, uh, uh, you know, row here, a lot of third party software, especially WordPress websites. Occasionally vulnerabilities happen. Um, we get notified when these things happen and we patch, you know, right away. So another thing, it's like bugs are a little different, obviously 24 hour critical updates, very similar, but a same same concept. You got to explain that to them. Multi layer security. There's a ton of things you know, obviously that you can do here. We ensure your website is secure by hardening every layer of your um, of your website's infrastructure. Daily backups, user security, application security, static code analysis, files. Like you, ha like that right there is such a big part, especially recently in like you know WordPress community and just things that we see all the time. If you're subscribed to the WordFence newsletter, you see all the stuff happening, right? Like there is in other newsletters, but like you you have to you have to do that. You have to be a professional there. You have to make sure that their, their website is secure and you have to explain to them like, we don't have to explain, like to the client, we don't have to explain every single detail to you if you don't want to hear that, but you have to understand the severity of this. Like this stuff happens all the time. If you don't want your website to go down, if you don't want, uh, you know, a lapse in business, people being able to see your stuff, like that's a, that's a very important part and we're managing all of that for you. Uh, 24 seven uptime monitoring. Your website will be monitored 24 seven for any downtime. It should go offline for any reason and be notified. Okay. Some of this stuff is, is relatively standard, but again, just explaining it to them and pointing it out. Like it's, it's not that they don't care necessarily. It's more that they don't know. And if they don't know, then it's very difficult for you to sell them on it because they don't know. And what they, what they don't know is the, 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 the gap there is making it difficult for you to actually sell them on things like explain say the words 24 seven uptime monitoring, and then they might understand a little bit and then explain why it's super valuable. And then most of the time I'll be like, oh, well that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously I wanna know if the thing goes down. It shouldn't, but I wanna know, right? And then, and uh, the next thing, DNS management, we need access. Uh, we have access and manage your domains DNS properly to set up the website, if you, any troubleshoot, any changes needed. DNS is crazy, if you know, right? Like, I mean, like there's, there's so much going on there and it's often, so overlooked and a lot of times you'll have like a client that has just a GoDaddy email, GoDaddy domain and there's like a million records in there and I mean it is it is it can just be an absolute clusterfuck minefield right and the fact that I mean if they have a tech team you know an IT team maybe you're, you're working in tandem with them or maybe they have that but you know if you Cloudflare as a quick example like we try to put everybody on Cloudflare and and, and obviously manage the DNS there. And that's 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 a project. Like I know it's a one-time setup in a way, but if if they ever work with anybody else, if they get email, they change email, they have to put security uh, records in for certain things, the email, now DMARC and all that, like you have to at least know a good bit about that to, to manage that and help them with that. And if you throw that in there, then that's another thing that you're adding value there because they're going to be, they're going to, you know, they might come to you now to, to change some things or whatever, but it's another piece that like, it's, it's something that should be in there. It's in your domain, not to, you know, make a pun there. It's in your domain as a web designer and a web developer and a web professional. Uh, so I think that that's, I think that's crucial. Daily website files and database backups. So again, they don't, we don't anticipate anything going wrong. We've got to be prepared for it. That's just a professional thing to do. Make sure everything is backed up as uh, as frequently as you need to, and you have something there, and that's going to give them a lot of uh, a lot of peace of mind. Image optimization is another big one. Again, you're doing that offline, you're doing that online, but if if you're making content edits and things like that, then you want to make sure that that you are giving them uh, the most amount of kind of, again, those like little in, t intangible things like that, like that, that just matters. You may not even need to write that. You'd probably, com co you know, combine it with something else, but like that is something really important because that's gonna, that's gonna, without just saying like some sort of blanket performance optimization thing, you, you could try to do something like that, but that is gonna absolutely um, really benefit them from the, from the performance side of it. So kind of calling that out, I think is not a bad idea. Form email delivery monitoring and spam protection. All form submission will be monitored and delivered to your inbox as soon as they're submitted. Spam submissions will be filled out and rejected. This is something that I did get a question on when I posted um, the screenshot of this in uh, in one of those Facebook groups. Um, in reference to a question, somebody asked like, "How do you 
uh, monitor that and everything. Currently we use SendGrid and if there's any balances or anything like we kind of get monitored, we've kind of like not like, like kind of tweak the settings to, to not let that happen as much from the bounce side of it. We were having some issues with that a while ago. Um, there's also, uh, you know, postmark, I think it's called, right? So that's like another great one. But the point is like, as long as those, as long as those forms are getting there, you're not relying on the WP email, whatever terrible little thing that is with the, with that function or whatever. And that, and that mechanism. And then as long as you have something in for SMTP, like you're using something for that. And then as long as you're using like a turnstile or a recaptcha for spam protection, like just so they're not getting a ton of crap, there's also clean talk, right? Like as long as you're doing something there, that is of huge benefit. And and again, explain that if they question you, you can write it even a little differently than I have. Like you're not going to get, you're not going to get like a ton of spam stuff to your inbox now because we have, we have literally filtered that out and we, we don't worry about that. So again, another, a, a lot of these things are quality of life. Again, they don't understand how important they are and how impactful they are until it happens. Basic content updates per your request. We can um, make basic content updates on your content while this plan doesn't include. You, if you do this, you have to, this is the, this is a net, the end. The top one and the last one are like the most uh, crucial ones. If you do this content update stuff, you have to be extremely, extremely specific in what you're doing. Okay. Uh, while this plan doesn't include new design or development, it does cover t tasks like changing photos, replacing text, removing, hiding it pages. Honestly, that is actually even too vague for me. I need to work on that. But my, here's my point is that let's take a step back from this. You built a website. You want to get them on the website management. You've proposed this. This is also in a larger document, which I'll share more and everything like that, the, the, the templates and everything. So make sure you're subscribed and, and you'll get uh, notified next time we post more of these stuff, these types of videos. If you're, if you're enjoying it, this is two pages basically out of a 20 page proposal. Okay. And in these two pages, it's just the website management stuff, but in the rest of it is a proposal for, or for a new website and, and any other services. So you have to set the expectation that you are going to build a website and then you're going to manage it for them. The, the website is like, you, you know, it's like a one-time payment or multi-payment, but it's like, you know, it's a one-time engagement. Then this thing is monthly. Then the, the, we're, we're going to continue to be partners though. Like, it's not like we're just going to run to the hills after we, you know, get this set up on Stripe or whatever for recurring. We are going to continue to meet with you. This is how you come back and bring this all together. You say, we're going to meet with you every month. Okay. If you have little simple things like changing photos or replacing text, maybe I've seen people do like kind of like timed increments there. However you want to do it. If you want to say unlimited, simple content changes, you could say that too. But, but understand client that what this does not include is it does not include us adding pages. It doesn't include us adding any sort of functionality, like any sort of like, like real like sections or I don't know, calculators or like any sort of random stuff. It doesn't include like, oh, you can't, people can't log in the website. You want people to log in? No, no, that does, that's not included. All of that stuff is scoped separately as statement, as, as many projects, whatever you want to call them, separate statements of work. Now that this, this first project is done, the build, and we're on the recurring of the management, we're happy to do more work for you, but we just have to get paid for it because you know, you have to keep the biggest lesson that I can give you is keeping that statement of work that everything you do extremely tight and making sure that this is what we're going to do for this amount of money. That's, that's the plan. Like that's it. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, the one last thing that I want to tell you is that, uh, the, the best way that I've found so far to figure out what this number should be down here, this 299 number, it should not be gut. You should go back to something like this and understand how much each one of these things are costing you if you do like a base plan and you have to figure out what your what your number should end up being based on your cost and based on how much money you want to make and all that sort of stuff. The best resource that I've found for that is Kevin Geary's profit calc calculator, like um, like website care plan profit calculator. I will leave a link to that in the description. Go over there, sign up for his stuff and take a look at that. Okay, because that is that has helped me tremendously kind of build this and it's morphed into what I what I want to see out of my business and, and what what's worked well for our clients so far. And, and this has been just fantastic for us. So, again, appreciate you guys checking out this video. Hopefully you make you sell a lot more care plans, website management, whatever you want to call it. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.